It'd be fun to know if I could take a song and find out the combination of other songs that could mix best next. What songs sound best next? Say that with me again. What songs sound best next? In my head, I always had that cycling over and over. What song sounds best after 24K Magic from Bruno Mars? How weird, right? That, that constant cycle of repetitious thoughts. And it happened to me four years ago. I'm literally sitting in my beanbag, right? But in my head, I'm like, what song mixes best after this song? What song blends perfectly with that song? And I know there's technology that does that, Serato, Virtual DJ. You've got your controllers that help you find. But to me, I've always felt that you could get that word out faster by creating crates organized by performance. That was the whole beginning of our crazy crate hackers community. That was the secret sauce. That was the hack of the century, in my opinion. It, it brought me to where we are today, crates organized for performance. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. If you can see my screen right now, take a look at crate hackers. We're uh, currently in the website, app.cratehackers.com. And I'm gonna bust open, let's see, I'm gonna go pull up this hackathon crate here. Any crate that we've ever published follows that what mixes best next philosophy. Okay, so pay attention to the songs in the center of the screen. It's an open format crate that starts off with some very familiar songs and pay close attention to the key and the BPM. We're not too far off with every single mix. See, this is the thing that I think a lot of people who just dive into Crate Hackers glance over. They don't notice this very important detail is that everything is in performance order. We do our best to try and make it as seamless of a mix as possible. So you could start anywhere in this crate. So I could just spin the crate, stop here, right? And I know for a fact that this new song from Cardi B, Bongos, mixes perfectly into Pitbull Hotel Room Service. That's actually a pretty cool mix. I haven't thought about that until now. What this does is it opens up that creative repetition in your head that I'm hoping to plant that seed with tonight. What mixes best next? That makes sense. Are you with me on this? It's funny that not many people had thought about th this thought pattern. Well, they did. They, DJs always have, but we never really put it into a list form. And it always bothered me when I was listening to a Spotify playlist or a Tidal playlist, and they were all at a jumbled mess. Maybe it was an 80s playlist, and you're listening to the songs, and then that segue kicks in. The, the song is rap, and another one's coming in, and it's just jumbled because of that shoes in the dryer sound. I always wanted to eliminate that. What song mixes best next? Key, BPM. Those are some ways to really help out with trying to figure out what perfect combination. But I also go a little geekier on you. If you can see next to the weekend's popular, you've got a energy score, a danceability score, and a mood. So yeah, key, BPM, hard to keep track of all the time, but Here's some more layers to throw your way. Things to really shape the sound of your environment. You want to change the mood? You want to make people a little bit more aggressive? You want to make people a little bit more romantic? You can do that with playing with these metrics. So I love that. That's one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight. And then also share a few more along the way. If you're feeling it, put a one. You like it? You like what you're seeing? Cray Hacker OG members, where are you at? Any Cray Hackers OG? Who's my day one? You my day ones? All right, cool. Thanks for joining. The 60-40 DJ method is super important to bring up. It's one thing to have a playlist or a crate, which let's just call it what it is. A playlist is a crate is a playlist. There's no real differentiation. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Every crate that we build goes by the 60-40 DJ method. 60-40. So we're moving from what mixes best next to 60-40. And this needs to repeat every time you look at a crate as well. What I mean by this is... You can look at all of these songs that are pushed out daily. I think I've said this a number of times, but Spotify pushes out 150,000 songs a day. Spotify pushes out 150,000 songs per every 24 hours. I know I have some amazing DJs in this community. Y'all are some of the best. I look up to you, but there's no way you can keep track of all of those songs. It's just impossible. So I'm going to help you a little bit, but not all the way. I feel I could give you all the sauce. I could easily give you the playlist I played last week. Sure, but the sauce is 60-40. I'm going to give you 60% of the best songs 
leaving you with 40% of your true instincts to complement it. So I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more work than the average DJ in every crate. I'm going to put a little extra spice into every single crate with a 60-40 approach. Can I show you how that works? Let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and for this demonstration, pull up the Crate Hackers desktop app. By the way, think about your questions. This is a Q&A. We're going to go as long as it takes to get all questions answered. But I just want to be able to show you the, the thoughts for any new hackers to consider. I'm going to go ahead and type in any song. I'm going to type in 24K Magic. And I want you to take a look at the metrics that it displays. A key of 3B, a BPM of 106, energy, 80%. 81%, mood, 60%, popularity, that's huge, okay? So what if I were to give you 60% and above in popularity? What if I gave you a danceability score of 60%? Okay, so now I'm, I'm gonna essentially shave off the songs that are not popular and not danceable just by doing that. If I took 60% of the most popular songs, thereby just eliminating all the crap, for what that's worth, and then danceability score. So we're just, we're narrowing in just a little bit further. Then it's energy and mood that we're left with. Energy and mood. So I figure if I give us 40% of that, see how our mind's working? 60, 40. I'm gonna give you 60% and then 40%. Uh, you're gonna have those metrics every time you look inside of one of our crates. Make sense? 60, 40 DJ method. Crate Hackers is also known as a one-stop shop for song versions and I love that about this software more than any feature. I don't think we give it enough credit. How many remix DJs do we have in the audience? Anybody like to play bootlegs, mashups, go to the uh, record pools and pull up really interesting EDM remixes? Lionel does, Peter does, Steve, yeah. So for me, I loved it, but I always wanted to get like that hottest new remix before any other DJ. I'm sure you did too, right? I'm sure everybody does. You've got this new song that just popped, Cardi B Bongos is like, a hot song already, but you know that out there somewhere is a pretty dope remix. So I asked our developers just out of pure selfish greed to build this feature in to the Crate Hackers desktop software because it gives you an edge that no other bonk, DJ can bonk, have. Bonk, 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 bonk. Is that, right? <laughs> that song is ridiculously entertaining. I'm sure there's a remix out there somewhere. So let's take a look. I right, do a search for Bongos. Now, it's showing you here the songs that are a perfect combination mix with that 60-40 approach. We won't get into that, but it's down here that I want you to click Pools. If you click Pools, you're going to thereby be portaled into all of the record pools that will hopefully carry the song. Not every record pool has every song. You know that by now. But look what I just did. I did an accordion-style pull-down of heavy hits and late night record pool. And I guarantee if I pushed any of these other ones, I'd be able to have more selections. But just by being able to see a breakdown that there's some hype intro remixes, there's a uh, new Jackie remix, the new Spin King remix. So that's dope. I wanted to have a real time breakdown of what songs had a, a new remix out there. So for me, that was just so important. It was really important to have a one page to click and to be able to be portaled in as quick as I could to find that remix as fast as I possibly could. One-stop shop for song versions. So if you keep that in your mind as you're going through this crate, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I don't wanna play this crate the same way Aaron does. And I don't wanna just copy it word for word. I wanna put my spin on it. Yeah, so that, that's the solution right there. If you grab a different song version and make it your own, maybe find a style that complements you better, go for it. That's what it's there for. Cloud crates. Let's talk about cloud crates for a minute. Anybody use cloud crates? Just gauging in the audience. Put a one in the chat if you even know what a cloud crate is. Simeon does. Got a few. Okay. Todd Sickmiller uses cloud crates. A few people do. Okay. So DJ Cynical says, nope. All right. No worries. Is it? Okay. A couple of people asking what it is. All right. Let me share with you. Cloud crates. Personally, it's one of the most underappreciated and underlooked feature of all. And I will start by saying this. You don't have to have a record pool to enjoy Crate Hackers. It'd be nice to have one, of course you can. I, I really want you to support the artists as much as you possibly can and uh, support the editors. So pick a few of your favorite record pools, but honestly, you really don't need a record pool with Crate Hackers. Here's how, Cloud Crates. We're gonna go back to this crate. We're inside the open format hackathon crate. You're gonna be looking for a logo that says Cloud Crates. So it's the very first thing at the top of the page on the website, but I would think in a future version, it'd be nice to maybe enhance this a little bit more, but 
it's just like what you're seeing on the page, but duplicated across all major streaming platforms. Pay close attention to the order of the songs that you're seeing in the center. You got Kenya, Grace, Strangers, Taylor Swift, Cruel Summers, <clears throat> Sia, Cheap Thrills, Metro, Boom, and Creepin'. If I were to click on Spotify, this is going to take me to straight over to that Spotify playlist. So now you can take this on the go. You can add this to your own playlists on Spotify. And you've got a copy of the same crate you were just viewing on our website. Pretty cool. If you go over to Title, same thing will appear. It's an exact clone of all the crates we've ever built. So no matter where you are, no matter what format you've ever used, and I do want you to start to consider some of these streaming options as a backup plan for you. Again, have a record pool or two on standby, but you can always count on the reliability of a beat source. And you can see right here, we've created the same exact crate over on beat source. Last example would be, I'll take you over to SoundCloud so you can see it as well. There is an ability to DJ straight off with SoundCloud and beat source and title. So you're starting to see my point. We don't need a, a record pool for this kind of cool and it's sadly an underutilized feature inside crate hackers at the moment it's interesting to me i do feel at some point there will be a tipping catalyst will happen where we may have to go streaming someday we're just ahead of the pack i believe i don't think we're quite ready for prime time but we're building man i did some research i think we did over six thousand playlists so far across all these streaming platforms so we're just ahead of the pack and i want you to really uh, dive into that maybe subscribe to a few of these streaming services, add these playlists, see if you can get them up onto your uh, controller with ease. But I'm just telling you that this is the crate waiting for you on every single possible channel, which is nice. So that's one more feature I'll show with you before we bounce out of here and get to your questions. But let's also really point out the Spotify playlist import. Last thing we'll share before we get to your questions. Spotify playlist import is one of the most appreciated and the most used feature. And so this will be really handy for the people who are just joining us today. Uh, maybe it's their first week or month as a crate hacker. Don't sleep on this feature because more and more DJs appreciate this than anything else. I'm going to go ahead and take any Spotify playlist. And if I click copy link to playlist, and I bring this over to the crate hackers desktop app and click Spotify import, paste, go. What this is doing now is showing me what I currently have in my collection and what I don't. Here's Taylor Swift, Cruel Summer. I personally have the late night record pool version. And I also have, okay, so it looks like I have two copies of that. I don't need two copies of that, to be honest. Oh, wait, this is the radio edit. I don't think I need that anymore. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete that. It's gone. It's a good way to clean up your hard drive if you want to. It's also a great way to see which versions you currently have. Again, the remix junkies out there will really appreciate this. As you can see right here, I'm starting to stack up my remixes of Truffle Butter. And of course, I was able to find those through the pool dropdowns. So... Super handy. The Spotify import takes any list out there, for the most part. Many public Spotify lists can be entered in here, and then you can do some track matching to see which songs you have, which songs you need, and you can complete that playlist and turn it into your own crate. Once you're finished with track matching, you can click Export into Crate, and from here, you can export to places like Serato, Virtual DJ, Rekordbox, Tractor, and a safe backup would be exporting to an M3U. So that in essence, is one of the most utilized features and one of my favorites because it really helps you flex beyond the crates that we have built. Now, these are not in mixable order, I'm afraid. These aren't the ones that we curate in performance, but they are the ones that you'd like to have in your library. By all means, start hacking. That's going to do it. We can talk a little bit more about the banger button in just a little while. Maybe you all can hang out for some banger button questions towards the back end, but let's just really focus on Crate hackers, let's talk about your library. Let's talk about any kind of, let's say, bugs or things that you need hacking. What I have done tonight is, since we have a lot of people in the chat, thank you for being here. I have recruited my favorite developers and the whole Crate Hackers team standing by. We have the help desk. Ed Carey is hanging out with us. We have Austin Strom, our developer. I'm not sure who else is with us. We have Jem is with us. He could be our Serato expert. And anybody else? Yeah, Pete Sheriff, feel free to hop in. Questions, radio. I was hoping maybe you could scroll back into the chat and see if there's anything that I may have missed. But... Yeah, I did put some there. What I do is I do this for the bulbs. There's a question in the chat, but Ed and Jem's been pretty good at answering the question in the chat, but I put a star 
by any of those questions. I also did see earlier, Joanne, if you want to put, if you want to raise your hand again, we can call you up. If we have your camera on, we can call you up to ask your question for Aaron. Yeah, I'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one with anybody. Don't just limit it to the chat. Let's see if y'all can raise your hands and fire away. It's going to be really boring if I'm just reading so, the you want chat. Let's let me know. Right now, Michael raised his hand, so I'm going to call you in. Hey, welcome back, Michael. It's been a minute. How you been, Doug? Unmute me. Good. I'm well. <laughs> How are you? What's the temperature in your neighborhood right now? I think 35 or something out there, something like that. It's it's cold, and it's the sniffles weather. You know? Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Yeah, I just have a couple things, a uh, couple, um, not sure, I think there might be some like technical things regarding uh, Crate Hackers and the desktop app. And I was wondering, so first, when you're doing the track, you're doing the track matcher, some of these things are like, say, low accurate, lower accuracy results. And when the song is actually right there, how much, I guess the question is, how much more resources are going to be poured into the accuracy over the finder and mm. the track matcher versus other features. Yeah. And what Mike means by that is when we throw a song in that's like flow rider low, flow rider, some people spell it F L O R I D A when in reality it's actually F L O space R I D A. Yes, there are, we've trained it as best as we possibly can, but it is damn near impossible to keep track of the way every editor in America labels their own. It catches some things and then it misses others, but I completely understand that. It's... You bring up a good question, though. Austin, unmute yourself. Is there a way yeah. to improve in the future? I don't even know what goes on underneath that engine and how it would work. I know Glenn. It's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's definitely plans for improvement, and some things have been worked on already. I'm sure you've heard a lot about the hype behind the next version of Crate Hackers, and we've been pouring yes. a lot of time and effort into that. And that's one of my big things that I'm working on personally is trying to improve that track matcher and make it more accurate, but also, so I'm a huge remix DJ. So be able to find a lot of those edits and things like that, that aren't necessarily your cookie cutter, like this radio edit or whatever yeah. that may be. But yeah, there is plans to improve it. It's in the works. As Aaron said, for V3, I think it's about the best it's going to get at this point, but I would expect a new, stronger algorithm in store. Yeah. A couple like remembering the search selection even maybe even like seeing the bit rate of the file that it thinks is a good match along with the file name, oh. the location's good and everything. But knowing that it's going to be a high quality file that I'm selecting out of okay. the 50 in the club remixes that I have, some of them are like 128, even 96K. It doesn't even, those aren't good selections. And then I'm sure the search bar is going to get better as well. Searching for hackathon only lists like 10 when they're like, 30. That's probably right? a tagging issue on my yeah. part, probably. And I think that's when it comes to me building the crate. Sure. Uh, just a matter and of- last, Lastly, should I save the banger button stuff to the end? I just... Yeah, maybe come back for the banger button. I wanted to All show right. them. But yeah, the, uh, I, let's maybe raise your hand for the banger button next. But I think one thing that I want to ask you, have you worked with the bitrate finder yet? I have, and I've lowered everything. But what I'm trying to do is also use this. So I'll input all of the remixes I have into my crates before my gig or at the gig when I have downtime or whenever I can, I'll go through all of those remixes mm -hmm. and then comment on the ones that aren't good or bad quality. I'll just comment delete on there. And then I'll go okay. into my music app and I'll delete them all. And then so I'll pull up more accurate files that will be matched with Crate Hacker since I just have so many remixes, it's hard to do. But yes, the bit refinder. And then I'm worried like one song, I'll be playing like 56 times and it's like at 128 Love Shack. Right, it's it sounds good. Bang your button and and record box. Any work oh, there? That's the question is that the question? Not on the radar yet. As okay. as as much as I want to whip the uh, crack the whip because I'm a record box user, it's I'm giving these guys full focus to just get 4.0 out the door. We're gonna pause on banger button updates until 4.0 comes out, just because I, I don't want them doing two things at once in the meantime. Of course, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, Mike. Thanks, it. buddy. Thank you, yeah. man. Well, that's one thing about this uh, community is they want to feel like they they had something to do with this app. I, I've seen so many people bring up suggestions and ways to improve this app that ultimately over time, if, if it gets loud enough, we just make that happen. So Michael's brought up so many times, you know, my, Michael and others have brought up the track matching issue quite a bit. And the louder you talk about it, the more we're going to put resources behind it. So just keep that in mind as we take our next questions. Who else is out there, radio? Let's get Steve's uh, online because he says he can't raise his hand. So I'll raise, have him unmute and join us. 
Sure. Yeah, like, sorry about that. I couldn't raise my, it doesn't give me the option to raise my hand on Zoom. I don't know why, but every other Zoom, I do that. Probably, on, yeah, it's all good. Steve, what's up, bud? My one question I just became a crate hacker, I want to say three weeks ago. And my one question is I deal with Serato, DGJS, and I guess crate hackers can't run simultaneously with the Serato software. You follow what I'm trying to say? It the can't run in the background. In other words, I have to type in the music that I'm playing inside the search bar to give me some other selections I can use that go with the music. Is this the banger button that you're talking about? Or no, create hacker app. So you can't, yeah, you couldn't be, you can, you can run them simultaneously. You can definitely have them both running at the same time. Most yeah. laptops allow you to do both, but is it. Steve, uh, is it because Serato takes up the full screen? Is that correct? What yeah. Yeah. So what I do is I use multiple windows. So I'll, so that way on, if you're on a Mac, are you on a Mac? I'm assuming. Yes, I am. I am. Okay. So if you use the shortcut, I'm not on my Mac keyboard, but I think it's command and then arrow over, you can switch between desktops. So what I do is I always put crate hackers on one of my desktops and then I put Serato on another desktop and then I can move between it. I can share if you want me to, Aaron. I'm pulling up Serato right now. It's just taking a second to okay. boot up. I've got so many things cool. happening. But yeah, I think... because it's Serato will definitely overtake your screen. So you either got it. Now, another thing I did just get, and I will say, if you're missing having dual screens, I got one of those like portable like extender screens for a laptop that I was trying out. And okay. uh, that thing's killer, man. It clips right onto my laptop and I have a second screen so I can have... Crate Hackers off to the side and Serato on my main screen too. So that might be worth looking into as well if you're really getting that screen fatigue. Yeah, and I'm working with a really large screen right now personally. I don't know how big your screen is, but what I did was I was able to take this little plus button from Serato mm -hmm. and expand or contract it. So from that point on, I was able to resize it however I wanted. Okay. Tell you uh, something even easier to use? Go ahead, Ed. Since you're on Mac, command tab. Um, That'll work as well. If you press and hold, you can go to anything that's currently open. But the oh, more really? Things, they stick together as a group. So you can bang between the banger button and, and Serato or Virtual DJ, whatever, whatever you want, just by hitting the command tab after a while. I'm doing that right okay. now. Yeah, I'm it's doing that right awesome. now. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice Oh, one. wow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 I also it, use it. it comes together like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, also use, I think it's the control up as well. Or that like minimizes all your windows so you can see every window that's open and just click on the one that you want to pop up. I use that a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Serato does tend to try and force you yeah. into their garden wall. And I can see yes. why, because it wants to keep you from having to stutter and spout from one software. To the other. It, it wants to keep it RAM friendly, I think is what it's trying to do. Keep now, it I can take a track. I'm playing a track right now. I want to put the second track on. I can take it from Credit Packet and jump and pop it right into my Serato software. You could cool. download the songs from Crate Hackers. It would still show up in the same place where it shows up for you. What I'm saying, can I play? In other words, if I find it in Crate Hacker, I didn't find it in my Serato. I have, already have a song on. Can I take, can I copy the, can I drag the track to my Serato software? In other words, for my next track to play. I'm going to say you don't think so. Not straight out of the app, no. Oh, oh you yeah. can't. No. no It'll like I said, it's drag and drop download. It. It'll download to uh, any song you did in that pool drop down I was showing you earlier. Right. It'll download to your download folder. From there, you would drag it to Serato. Okay. Let me give you a quick example of that. I'm going to go into who had the bongos queued up. Can you play it again for me, please? We've got this, and then I'm pulling it down from the app. There's actually, there's actually a little faster way than that, Aaron. Is there? Yeah. So if you own the song, so if you pull up a, a crate that has the song that you own in it, there's a little spyglass off to the right-hand side of the song. And if you click on that, it will jump you right to your finder. And then you can just drag it from your finder into Serato. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. Let me get into yep. something like that for us. So yeah, if you jump, yeah, jump into another crate. Let's go to this one. I've definitely used this before. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that little right? spyglass icon on the right there. So, Steve, what you could do is here's your crate. Right. Here's the song that you've had before. It opens uh -huh. up in the Finder. Popped up somewhere. I just lost it. Anyway, the, there's a window. There's a Finder window somewhere on my screen. <laughs> but it does show that. And then you would drag it from there. So I guess that's another okay. workaround. But I think Steve might be onto something. The drag and drop feature. I know that Austin's smiling right now. 
So that maybe it'd be a lot easier. It would be so much easier. You're finding a great hack is just dropping it over. The... Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see if we can get that going for the next futures. Thank but... you. Yeah, man. Thanks for thanks for giving us a try. Three weeks in, huh? Very helpful. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. All right. Let's bring in Manny D. Hey, Manny. Have you on mute? Hello. Hold on a second. I don't know if you can hear me. I can, can you hear you. Hear we can't see you, though. We oh, hear you. Okay, we can see you, though. Yeah, sorry. I have a bad connection in my area. Let me see if I can. I can't do the video. Un undo the video for whatever reason. But oh, I guess okay. it's great that you guys can hear me. I love your app. I've been in for about three weeks ago, just the other gentleman there. And the one question that I had that I was really limited on is it seems like I haven't really selected. I'm new to the whole thing with the DJ record pools. And I wanted to know if you guys are going to have more of a selection of the record pools. The record pools that I wanted to join, you guys don't have them. Or not list them. Sure. So I wanted to know if you guys are working on that or is there some way of going to my record pool that I want to join and somehow be able to do that without doing it manually, like What's searching for songs. Who are you going with right now? Eighth Wonder. Oh, there's so they have good. videos as well. They're so good. Yeah. I know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to let you down a little easy on this one. And that's a great example to actually bring up. Eighth Wonder. I really wanted them in. I wanted to have every record pool in the app. But you know how sometimes you go to a website and it's hosted by Squarespace and another one's hosted by Google Domains or certain websites run off of WordPress, others run off of other things. What we found is certain websites that work with trade hackers work flawlessly. Others just simply could never work in the future. And, and the reason why I say that is because I looked at 8th Wonder and their website framework was different than everyone else's. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll notice that when you go to it next time you see it or compare it to another one, but it's just off of a different platform that I'm not able to pull their information from. What we do is oh, we, get okay. permission. we actually go and seek out permission from these record pools. And in fact, if anybody has a record pool, we say, come, please work with us. We want to, we were so lucky. We're the only company in America that was able to get all record pools on the same page, to be honest. So we still have that yeah. open to everyone. It's just a matter as if your website is compatible in 2024. So do you know anybody who works at this wonder, curiously? Which one on your list would you recommend that would do videos and let's say? Let's let's go around table really quickly. Gem, videos and record pool. What would be in your opinion? Like favorite record pool, record pool or are we talking about video record pool? I guess. Let both. He wants both. Here. Okay. Extendamix is my favorite for video and audio because they just have everything. All right. Peace. And they do audio. They do audio also. What I do is if I download from Extendamix, I can play the video as an audio track. I don't have to be playing. Yeah. So okay. I still go through, just like with all my songs, I'll drag that video track into Mixed In Key. I'll put it into Serato. I'll go through and I'll put all my cue points and everything in just like I would do any audio track. And I don't have to be playing video. I'll just play the track. Great. Okay. What's I've your heard favorite record pools? I'm pretty good with Extend the Mix or We Mix, which is one that's on the record pool list. The two do video files as MP3s. Just play the song. Don't necessarily play the video. I like the intros and outros and stuff. So Extend the Mix is probably my one of my favorites at the moment. Ed Carey? Yeah, Extendamix is definitely one of the one of the best ones. If you're looking for more remixes and some classic remixes, Xmix Digital is the other one to go for. They both have the Crate Key system, which is part of what makes them so legal and able to keep providing that awesome content. Mm -hmm. And that's why I support the both of them. What was the name of it? What was uh, the name of it? Digital. I'm sorry. And Extendamix. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, they've been around for a while. Local boys to okay. me. They've been around for years. Boy, are they ever. Great. Austin, real quick, favorite record pools? I don't do a lot of video, but when I do, definitely extend the mix for me. Have sometimes used X Mix just because I, like I said, I do a lot of the remixes and edits. But yeah, for video, I'd say those are definitely the top right now. Let me share with you the biggest hack of answer to your question is video. If you want it all, if you really want the most robust configuration, go video. And, and I'm telling you this because number one, there's a different legality in the way videos are hosted versus the way music is hosted. Did you know that? Yeah, it's true. Because if you take video, it's in a whole separate realm of legalities. MP3s and music download distributions are a completely different world. I don't know why. I wish I knew. But if you're looking for Justin Timberlake and Doja Cat and the Sony artists, for example, in, let's say, BPM Supreme, heavy hits, or you're not going to find them. Why? Because 
of this murky reality. Truth is, video, different world. Let me give you an example. Take a look at this. Go to the Create Hackers desktop app. We're still inside this hackathon crate, right? If I go to extend a mix, there will always near 100% of the time be a match. Why? Because videos are a different breed. Now, yes, I do realize, look at all these matches. Look, and look at this, it's Akon Smack That. A song that I guarantee probably is not being serviced by record pools lately. If you're looking for a discography, if you're looking to go deep, if you're honestly looking to go to the 70s, to the 80s, to the 90s, stop what you're doing now. Stop buying MP3s. Purchase video. Am I wrong? Ed, you're nope. nodding your head? No, that's it exactly. There's very few options. One of the ones that we don't have to list. Promo only is the only one the one that has a cap on it, but they also have video as well for the same reason. They have a partnership that allows you to buy your back catalog at like below the prices that you normally have from like your Amazon or iTunes music store. And it's awesome. And it's a huge game changer, but video is definitely the way to go. We have plenty of hard drive space. You don't have to have a solid state hard drive to run everything on. You can yeah. have a big honking 12 uh, terabyte hard drive as long as you have a power supply that supports it. And we breezed over it earlier, but you can play just the audio of a yep. video, right? Yeah. You should have a computer that's powerful enough to be able to handle both, yeah. regardless of whether you're using one or the other. And hopefully everybody's up there. Sorry, getting off my uh, soapbox there, but that's just something that needs to be shared with anybody with the record pool questions. Go ahead, let's fire away with any more. Radio, who do we have stacked up? All right, thanks again, Manny, for joining for that one. Okay, let me lower your hand. And then we have uh, Lionel and you in. Lionel! Hey, buddy. How you doing? It's been a second. What's up, dog? I've been pretty busy on my end. Everything's good. It's about 37 degrees out here in South. <laughs> I was just about to ask. So, uh, <laughs> What's your question, buddy? My, my question is, right now I'm getting into a lot of school dances. And I have a problem trying to get into that New Jersey club. I don't know where to buy it. And I don't know where to find it. And I'm looking for something that has clean lyrics because it's post in the did you post in the dj playlist group was that your question yeah that was you yeah i think i saw that earlier first off i noticed in the conversation when you asked for jersey club the purist said this isn't real jersey club if you're not from jersey or <laughs> i get it i get it but where you're looking for you're looking for jersey club remixes for school dances or what what in particular jersey club is like they have dj little man and dj taj and what happens is that they, I, I'm sure that in the West Coast, uh, I don't think they play that a lot out there. Here is pretty popular. Philadelphia, New York, and New Jersey in the tri-state area is pretty popular. Okay, so... I'm trying to find that. I like to keep it clean, and I am very meticulous about the sound bit rate, something that's at least a 320. Okay. So I would think... Tim, you're welcome to join us back on the screen here if you want to jump on, Tim uh, Stoibo, but... That be more sound is what he's looking for. Be more and a ton of great remixes for that. Where you can find them, I would honestly recommend start. Boy, where would you even start with that? Anybody? I, I'm not going to be the expert. I've had good luck with heavy hits for some of the Jersey Club remixes, but I'm looking at specifically like remixes of pop songs. So probably not what you're looking for specifically. Tim, what did you say? You don't hear. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Tim's like triple know. muted. He doesn't there, even there know. You go. You. There he is. <laughs> hey, what's up? Check out Bandcamp. Yeah. Hmm. You probably find some pretty sweet edits on Bandcamp. Bandcamp. And then if all else fails, go to Apple Music for now and see if you if you're looking for the quality. The radio edits are going to be what you can find there. I can't guarantee the quality of edits or remixes, but good start for you. Lionel, you're a braver person than me, man. I stopped doing school dances last year. I said that's it. There, there's a there's an age bridge that I think I've crossed. I I have two DJs. They came up and said, hey, can you take care of this for me? And I said, okay. And I have the sound equipment for them, the 18s, the 12s, and the 15s. And I walked in there and I rocked the house and now they don't want to let me go. <laughs> We're just passed out. I was like, oh my God. That's so. awesome. Keep it up, man, and send some pictures into the private group. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, man. guys. Hey, thank Lionel. All right. So next, he couldn't raise his hand, but he tried to raise it in chat. So we will call up Gunner. Gunner, are you able to unmute? Yes. There you go. Hey, guys. Yes. Hey, hey. Two part question. Number one, I'm concerned that I'm going to have to switch from Apple Music back to Serato. 
it seems, unless I'm missing something, and I'm new, by the way, to Crate Hackers. Welcome. That, thank you. It seems that there's a little ease of use, I guess I should say, with Crate Hackers in relation to Spotify. If that isn't the case, could you do a brief walk through with the iTunes process? Oh, okay. Uh, just to be clear, is it iTunes MP3s or are we talking Apple Music? What is the... Uh... I just recently figured how to go from the iTunes... What is their file? An AA, whatever it is. I have something like that, right? To convert that to an MP3. Okay. That next step from there to get it into virtual DJ has been... Is there a website that anybody knows of that I could go to that's... I've done... I'm sorry. It's easy. You just scan your music folder wherever yeah. you download in iTunes. A virtual DJ doesn't need to have anything converted. It just plays everything, including the AAC. If you have everything all in com- compass where the, your music folder is on iTunes, it'll be on your computer's hard drive under music. You open up music and it'll say iTunes if you're on Windows or music if you're under mac os yeah and it's literally right in there that's the folder so you just make that as a favorite in virtual dj and every time you go in and open up that folder it'll scan everything is can you do an all-in-one conversion if you're using highlight highlight all the songs and convert yeah. them at the same time inside of you don't need to convert them that's the thing don't bother it's natively supported Okay, so it's going to analyze it. Yeah. Search for otherwise specified, I believe it's just going to go look inside your C drive, whatever collection yep. you have, and it's just going to scrape everything regardless of if it's an iTunes, because at the end of the day, iTunes is just stuffing it into a, a folder that's buried somewhere. Virtual DJ will find that. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I usually decentralize it, so I'm not trying to put everything all in that iTunes folder I want, in the folder I want. <laughs> But you can leave it the way it is, and you go in under Virtual DJ, you go in under the tree structure, using Virtual DJ like the Explorer, and from there you can go in and select your music folder, and then just drill down until you get to that lower level of everything that's in iTunes Music, and then you right-click Set to Favorite, and it'll give you a yellow version. Every time you go in there, there's a setting that you can set, and it will automatically see what he's doing right here, it's just volumes. I'll just, That's, yeah, I'll just say. But this set of favorite is right there. What is it? What'd you say? Underneath batch and file operations is set like favorite. If you set as favorite. To... That's it. So no matter where your folder is, if it's maybe your iTunes somewhere buried underneath this, you'll just have to find it. But once you find it, click set as favorite. And then even before then, you should have already auto analyzed everything that's in your hard drive anyway. So just yeah. yeah. and you also set it up to add everything to database. So every time you open up a folder, it's in the settings in the configuration menu under settings. Everything that's added to the database automatically is from one of the folders that you look at. Do that with favorites and it automatically will pull that data and you don't have to worry about that kind of kludgy off to the side integration with iTunes. Right. Just that out of the picture and not have to worry about it. It's all automatic. Yeah. Does that process stand true for the video service that, that was kicked about here a few minutes ago? We should make uh, yeah, pretty much the same with Extended Mix and X Mix. Yeah. They can be either downloaded from the website or they have X Mix as its own downloader. So you select exactly what you want and it automatically do it every time it's launched. I just have it go to everything goes to a single folder for that year. That way, as I'm working, I can sort what I want to keep, what I want don't want to keep, and then I can move that over to the main library once once everything's done. So if you're doing a one folder method, that's how to keep a clean second folder. You're organizing it, then that's how you do your organization and, and move the stuff over. That way you can do it in the app because Virtual DJ likes to ta- tally everything within the app. I'll just have it go to that one place. That way I can open it up. It automatically finds everything. I can search through and find stuff very quickly. And if I don't like something, I can just delete it right from there. Very cool. Back to Aaron. Thanks for the tip on the, I keep calling it the video <laughs> pool. What the hell's the name of it? Which one? The extended the mix. mix. The mix. Yeah. The mix. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you can afford it, how fun hey, would it be to have a video component to your sets now? I mean, I, I, I really think that's a big advantage when you're not at the mercy of the record companies, yeah. but they're pimping. So yeah. That only stands to reason. Good point. Thank you. Thank <laughs> hey, you. Gunner, thanks for thanks for hacking. I appreciate that. Sure. Yes, sir. Thank if you guys aren't running videos live, do it on streaming as well. That's what that TV back there is for. That's all I do is I run videos in the background of my live streams. Yeah. And I have. You need to be able to say to yourself, I have 
access to every single song I could ever want. Now you're paying for credits. I think that there's, yep. it's, it's safe to say that you're not just going and a la carte downloading like you would on a direct music service. You're paying per bushel or something. Is that right? Yeah, it's like a bundle a month, I think, depending on what you buy, 30 downloads or 50 downloads, yeah. which I think DMS does something similar <laughs> on Extendamix. But yeah, I, I went on Extendamix. It saved my bacon when I had a, uh, a Italian like 40th birthday party and they wanted oh, Italian yeah. music. And I looked everywhere, guys, like just <laughs> everywhere. And I was like, I am finding nothing. And I <laughs> signed up for Extendamix and they had 90% of the songs they requested. I'm telling you. The hidden gem, the little secret hidden hacks inside the software, the app, the community. That's why it's such a loaded question. What is Crate Hackers? What are we? What do we do? It's. I'll tell you this. We've been at this for four years now, every Tuesday night, talking about this exact same thing. So it's not going to be something we can answer in a one-hour setting. But listen, I'm having a blast with you all, and we still have 60 people chilling with us. How about this? I'll go until 50, all right? And if 50 people are hanging... We'll just we'll keep shooting the shit until then. Tristan, we see that radio? Yeah, we got Tristan. But before I call up Tristan, Ed, and Jim, is there anything, any question you want to bring up from the chat that you think you want to, that you haven't, that you've already answered, but maybe you want to I, answer out loud? I would, and it's, it's a question, it's not, but I would highly recommend to everyone, regardless of what software you use, export to MU. There's a reason for this. So the, what my system is, is I export, I'll export the crate to M3U. I save it in a folder that I have, and that's my my Crate Hackers folder. And what an M3U is, if you're not familiar, it's just a it's a file that's a playlist file. So what an M3U is, all it does is it points to where your music's already located. So if you move your music around, it will break the M3U. But the reason you want to export to M3U is when you have that M3U, you can drag that into Serato. You can drag it into Virtual DJ. You can drag it into Rekordbox. If you change your software, you can always use the M3U. So the M3U... <laughs> here really back. quickly, I just clicked on the M3U as I saved it, and I yeah. double-clicked on it. It automatically opened up to yep. Apple Music. Yep, right there. So yeah. it's, I so it, if you're having trouble with exporting, Ed will tell you this too. One of the first things we're going to tell you is to just try exporting to M3U. And it's not just because we're trying to be like jerks about it. <laughs> it's because it's so universal and it saves. And I use Serato. I don't use export to Serato crate. Yeah. I how do you do that? You just take a, uh, hold on a second. I, let me just demonstrate just, that. Oh, I think if I take this M3U that I exported, yep. isn't it that you just drag it into Serato or something? Where do you drag it? Yep. So drag it into where the crate list and it should pop up right there. If it doesn't, because Serato has this weird drag and drop thing lately, you yeah. can go to files and just take it from, so in Serato down there on the right, okay. if you click files, right middle. Yep, middle. And then oh, the right. there it is. Yeah. Really okay. go. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then hit the desktop. Yeah, and drag that over into a blank space on your crate list on the left there. Oh, shit. Yep. There oh, cool. Oh, wow. There it is. Boom. Hey. That's how I do it. Okay, let's, I, I went to hard drive. I went to music. I went to wherever it was stored at. It was on my desktop, and it was sitting right here. This M3U which you could save as a backup somewhere. As long as you don't move your music, as long as you're not scattered about and you have maybe that one folder system that we always preach, the M3U should stay the same no yeah. matter where you go. Now, let me take this a step further for you. Let's pretend, for example, you have, like what I have, go into your Dropbox and you have got the one folder to rule them all, the one folder of songs. If that can be shared on another laptop, and this M3U can be shared on that other laptop as well. You've basically moved your collection from one computer to another. How often does that happen where you're just like, how do I get my music from one place to the next? M3Us, as long as the file paths are safe and you're in a cloud collection somewhere and it, it can locate it, I'm telling you. Yeah, you that's can, my whole system. That's exactly <laughs> the way it should be. And the great thing about that too is it, that it's almost a better reason for having the one folder system because you don't have to worry about accidentally changing like an artist folder or right. a album folder and that so the m3u system is actually what kind of pushed me over the edge into going to the one folder system okay i, I will say you, that... you have it saved in the cloud somewhere yeah it's on dropbox i have okay, everything perfect. in dropbox yep perfect so in reality yeah, I did... oh sorry go one i was just gonna say i did the uh, same thing you did the same thing yeah i two three years ago now i decided to start again from scratch with everything 
and I built a one folder system. I use the M3 years then and just one folder. It's so much easier. And all the UK crate hackers are trying to get, educate them into one folder system as well. You could take your laptop, brand new laptop, or maybe one that's just been sitting around forever and you put all this love into it. But if you damage that laptop, you like within 24 hours or less, you could be back up and running with that M3U backup folder. I'm telling you, if you save M3Us and you save a folder somewhere in the cloud, you call them dummy terminals. Glenn, our coder, says the same thing. Dummy terminals. Every MacBook, every laptop should be considered a dummy terminal to where they're disposable. They need to be disposable because, shit, you lose your laptop, you're at a gig, what do you do? You go to your friend's computer, you log into Dropbox, you bring down that M3U, you're up and running, man. You may lose a cue points, you may lose beat grids, but at least you're up and running. So yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. Jim, with his opinion of M3 use. What was it, Ed? What was there something you wanted to share? Oh yeah, the there's a couple of weird bugs that pop up with, with Serato and, and I gone to gone at bat and argued back and forth with a couple of the guys in tech support that said, no, those don't exist. And, and they do. But that M3U is the one thing that's the saving, saving grace. Because half the time it's you're going in and you're reloading it and Serato goes, yeah, this is foreign. I don't know if I can save this. Tosses it out. Or it decides, oh, I was saving something over in the external, not the internal. And then it just deletes it because it didn't save to the internal this time around. Does and the M3U work and, with Denon? Yeah, those are reconcile the library. And the other question was the work with the Denon, which you have to use the M3U to, to import. They work uh, very good that way. Okay. Ooh. Good to know. Yeah. This is fun. All right. Geek talks. Lots and lots of geek talk today. I love it. <laughs> Let's bring in Tristan. Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, it's a question I got is right in the same vein as what you were just talking about. Yeah. I already do M3Us. I'm a, mainly a tractor DJ, but yeah. I also do record box and Serato with different controllers. So I use iTunes to be my master library. I bring all my M3Us into iTunes. And then from whatever DJ software I'm using, I just browse to iTunes and all my playlists are there. So in the actual DJ software, I only keep the handful of playlists that I'm using at that gig and right. delete them and pull them back from iTunes as needed. What I'd like to do is do the one folder method, but my problem is I've tried it a couple times and there might be a workaround, but when I do the one folder method and I load all my songs back into iTunes, all of those playlists from iTunes are gone because it doesn't recognize those as the original files. Mm -hmm. And the same thing I'd also would like to do the platinum notes, all this, everything I've downloaded over the last couple years, even though I still use iTunes, I don't let iTunes manage the music. I'm throwing it all in the main like iTunes folder okay. in front of all with all the other subfolders in it. But is there a way to reload all your songs into iTunes, do the one folder, the flatten the folder? and right. not have iTunes lose all your playlists. It all goes down to the location in which it was originally found. iTunes is going to find that location and remember <laughs> it. And then whatever you bring into it after deleted, it's still going to go back and look for that old location. So you're going yeah. to inherently lose that. I don't it, speak on iTunes unless maybe radio or somebody else can chop it up, but <laughs> I know that there are workarounds for Serato and Rekordbox to trick it to think it's in one place when it's actually at another you can trick the location just in time i've done it a few times where you can let's say make a copy of that one folder or you take all your songs and you throw it into one folder but you want serato or record box to say wait it's over here but psst, it's actually over here you can do that Le Le the best way for that lexicon is the best way i feel okay like, pete can you speak on that more yeah Lexicon, you can pull in all your iTunes, uh, Apple Music, whichever, playlists, move all your files into one folder, and then Lexicon, you can tell Lexicon to go and find them in yep. the new location. Nice. Which is the best way, and it's so easy. I did it several times now. <laughs> No, yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's very good. <clears throat> but it tricks but, it into remembering where the playlist is in iTunes and remember it correct. send it to a different file you location. Can, once Ooh. you've moved it, once you've moved everything, a lexicon's found it, you can then send it back. It's all in one place. You can then send it then back, send to, it back iTunes. to iTunes. Yes. Okay, so Tristan, it's moving all those again. Tristan, thing, when you do the one folder flattener, it's creating a new file, and iTunes doesn't recognize that file initially to link it back to the playlist. So the lexicon, that's what you need, lexicon. You're doing a workaround. Yeah, you're sending it to lexicon, flattening it there, 
and then sending everything back to iTunes. I would say this yeah. before you say okay. all of your songs. Do a batch test really quick. Throw a hundred songs in and just do a sample yeah. back and forth before you go all right. because you yeah just test a small folder of songs with that theory. I have redundant redundancies. Backup guys. on backup. Yep. Backup on backups. I got three laptops that all match each other. And then I have my own uh, network server. So. Dummy terminals. <laughs> Dummy terminals. That's right. Right. Let yeah. me ask you and your Apple Music, when you use Apple Music, since you said you did this, you want to make sure that the music media folder location points to your one folder that rules them all and you uncheck keep music media right. folder organized that removes yeah, that yeah. right and so yeah. that's what you want to make sure it's looking at before it does that way it's not going to, this is my work computer so none of my performance files are in here but typically i have this one full pointing to my solo folder and i don't seem to have that issue occurring i do have the original before my collection goes back for years so i got it where itunes before i knew any better still had all the thousands of subfolders at one point, I did stop that process. But when you use the folder flattener in iTunes, it's creating new files. So right. when you copy. load them back into iTunes, it recognizes them as brand new files and doesn't associate them with any of the existing playlists. Yeah. It's that workaround we got to talk about with yeah. Lexicon. I think yeah. that's the ticket. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. And I've used Lexicon before when I first switched from Tractor to Recordbox. I use Lexicon to move over playlists that already had cue points and stuff in it. Hey, just really quickly, so, two minutes. Just tell me, what is the state of Tractor in 2024? What's going on? State of Tractor is the same as it was probably a decade ago. Rock solid. It's Super rock stable. solid, exactly. Yeah. I use Tractor as my DVS system. I'm running DVS. I have Tractor, and I don't do video. I do want to do stems. And that's why I got the new uh, Pioneer Flex controller to start doing stems on Serato because record boxes stems just don't work well. I'm trying to figure out as a, if I should just hold out because I'm familiar with record box. If I should hold out and wait for record boxes stems to get better because I know record box, or is it worth me taking the time alpha to theta. Use... alpha theta? What? Uh, yeah, alpha <laughs> theta. Yeah. So I really shouldn't do anything because next week everything could change. After everything could change. What's going to yeah. happen it, with them, right? Yeah, who knows? There's a new there's a new tractor apparently uh, coming out next week. So I heard today. I'd be happy with that. Like I said, tractor's rock solid. I like the customizability of it. I've used it with all kinds of weird stuff. Using the, like full on forty nine key MIDI keyboards, Akai keyboards with the drum pads, with tractor and a turntable. And then linking that to Ableton Live. Like you could do some really fun stuff with Tractor if you want to get into like production level stuff. Oh, yeah. But just as far as basic DJing, it's rock solid. I've never I've had a problem their controllers. with it. I've always and, loved their just little miniature experimental touchscreen, tiny fit your pocket. Tractor's always been fun. Yeah. Tristan, it, thanks for fun, hanging out with us. Yeah. There's no, nothing new in Tractor recently. No. It may change. Alpha Theta. Somebody asked, what's the deal with Alpha Theta? I don't know. I just woke up to it this morning. Can someone fill me in? Did, did they change the name? Is it they, no longer they made They made an announcement this morning saying that the future products are going to be branded Alpha Theta. But so this controller here that... is going to have a different name now? We're not no Pioneer, <laughs> only Zool, Alpha Theta. <laughs> yeah, Ghostbusters. <laughs> the, the, they're still going to keep Pioneer uh, brands running. The, okay. Uh, okay. And so this morning, first thing this morning was there is no more Pioneer from the 25th of January. Then later on in the afternoon, it turns out that they're keeping Pioneer and adding Alpha Theta to it. So that's where we're at. That like in the office. Can you imagine that? Somebody Guys, pushes the only post button. From now on. Well, <laughs> we are no longer Pioneer. They send it out to the waves and then like suddenly after lunch, they all come back. It's because they still have the Pioneer name on consumer products, but it was Pioneer DJ. So Pioneer DJ is going away and being replaced by Alpha Theta. So Alpha Theta is going to be their DJ brand. That's how I understood yeah. it. I'm so confused. Yeah. So all those clubs, all these controllers, everything that proudly displays Pioneer, like I could show you on this controller, like they, it's the biggest logo and everyone says Pioneer. But So now it's all going to say Alpha Theta? Every booth's going to say Alpha Theta? Yeah, and it's going to have that yeah. uh, logo that they someone drew up in <laughs> Microsoft Paint, apparently. They download <laughs> Alpha Zion, that your new record box. The, the DJ company formerly known as Pioneer. Yeah, it's going to be a symbol. They, they say it taps into the philosophy. Can somebody pull up the Instagram post, please? 
Uh, can somebody go find yeah. that answer? Because they made an announcement about this and I, I just briefly found it. But they mentioned how Alpha Theta taps into the brain waves and how it, they're wanting to pioneer the sound of tapping into the, I'm assuming their subconscious it was a really cryptic post is my point. They're going to be really inclusive with DJs, but also producers and also something else. I think they're tapping into what can excite the heart rate, what can excite the mind. When you think alpha theta, just the term alone used in science all these years, I'm not going to be an expert in it, but I'm telling you, I think they're, could we be onto something bigger than just the DJ? Are they onto something before we know? I do. Do we not have the full story yet? Stay tuned. Is that Simeon? Bring, What's up? Uh, yeah, let's bring on Simeon. Let's see. What up, hacker? Oh, yeah. Here we go. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Yeah, it's been a while. I haven't jumped on these very often lately. Yeah. I miss it. Yeah, I'm glad you're back. What can I help you with? What? Actually, I was going to touch back on the videos. We, you guys were talking about mixing the music videos, getting music videos. You can still play them as MP3s in the softwares. If you are a subscriber to Direct Music Service, I don't know if you guys know this, you get a free pro subscription to smash vision yeah smash oh, vision right. i've forgotten about that you know another dj reminded me just a couple of weeks ago i'm like are you serious because i just started going into music videos myself and <laughs> lo and behold i i can get almost everything on smash vision there are some limitations I, but be careful because i was using my if you had the ultimate dms subscription yep. there was a while there where you got a free subscription with smash vision so i was like oh this is great and then i downloaded a bunch of videos and then they blocked me like they banned me from their platform because i used too much bandwidth like how am i supposed to know this so <laughs> well, you're not just be careful like they're little... that. songs at once but... that's something that's like an only tim issue though that's i don't know <laughs> river in his grandma's car just <laughs> that's something that would only happen to tim he's like, i'm gonna download 400 gigabytes of this because i can't <laughs> From Starbucks. Yeah. It's like He's one, like the two modern two day terabytes. Christian Slater's pump up the volume. Just I will. <laughs> How you been, man? We'll talk with Tim in a minute. We got the uh, the creators of 4.0 and the guys helping out. Glenn, we're going to hang out with him in just a little bit here. But Simeon, any other questions that you have for the team before we. When you guys were talking about the M3Us, I was really concerned about the guys that were doing standalones because it's a little tougher to, to transfer just an M3U over to a standalone. So you're going to have the playlist, but you're not going to have the songs or where it's routed to. If you're running Virtual DJ or coming from Virtual DJ to a standalone, a really cool feature in Virtual DJ is the CDJ export feature. You can actually export the play the whole playlist, which is really cool. You just move the playlist over to the export, and it will not only transfer, transfer the M3U, the music, plus your cue points. So you won't lose any of the cue points, which is really cool. And if you right click on the right, if you right click on it, they just added this new thing, the auto generate stems that at the top. Whoa. Of yeah. Hold on. Wait, what? Yeah. You I can put, put acapellas stems. on one USB instrumentals on another USB or what? I'm not a hundred percent on how it works, but I like you can now export your stems as yeah. well. So <laughs> you might be able to, depending on the software that's built in so you're uh, on the denon you have the engine and whatnot i don't know if they support stems yet but seeing this oh. maybe looking at the future of standalone really cool. stems yep what could you do with that i, I want somebody to test this theory so, out because... i'm guess i'm guessing it's like when you do the pre stems separation so that way you don't have to process live the yeah. stems on the standalone they're this already processed the well, broken think about from a live right. reading potential like somebody over here could be doing the, the mids another person over here could be doing the, the instrumental the other person could be doing is that possible i, I want to flex that opportunity and see if that's what it's trying to do because if you can export onto different usbs and have standalone controllers <laughs> all doing their own separate part of the harmony or, or the uh, composition well, record box is weird because they they have stem capability built in and aaron can confirm but the way they do it, it isn't in one file. So they're not going to be able to take that virtual DJ saves everything as an MP4 file, which is normally a video format, but it has multi-track audio. So their stems are in one document that has multiple tracks listed. And you could open it up in Audacity or any DAW and break it apart however you want and remix with it. Always been able to do this. And it's an awesome feature. I could probably pull up a couple of videos on it if oh. anybody's interested. What this does is it breaks that down to the granular stereo document. So you have a stereo file that's your MP3 that has just the stems for acapella. 
just the stems for those. And how Record Box handles it is they use a different player for each stem. So you basically would be using multiple players or you'd be overlapping them as samples. Yeah, four decks on maybe the same controller or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, mind blown. Simeon, thanks, some for cool us, uh, thanks for letting us tap in. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, look at that. We are now at 50 participants. Wow. Oh, wait, back up to 51. Wait, I, I made a promise that if we get to 50 participants, then we're going to back out. But now we just have one person hanging. So if any of you drop out, that means the show is over. So it all depends on you. I did. Uh, coming back to the Alpha Theta thing from their Instagram post, they talk about Alpha Theta directly refers to the brainwave frequencies achieved in optimal performance, which I'm thinking is an AI tip. Say that again. Can you put it up on screen? Or can uh, you... I was going to, I got it here to share, but it won't it share. Chat, yeah, reason. share it on the screen because this is, it was cryptic. I'm telling you, you just said the same thing I was seeing because repeat that again, Jim. What was it? Here. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So the name Alpha Theta directly refers to the brainwave frequencies achieved in optimal performance. What does that mean? What does that line right there mean? Yeah. When they change the name from Pioneer to Alpha Theta, but you can see there in the second paragraph, they want to, collaborate relationships with a network of DJs. They're still keeping DJs in mind for this. And they're including creators to shape the products. So it's not just DJ centric, but what does it mean? What is the... Yeah. No, I'm, Maybe I'm they'll use that's... Elon's neural yeah. net or whatever. <laughs> Tim, what do you think, man? You're at the forefront. By the way, Tim, unsung hero amongst the team, man. He's working hard on 4.0. Your thoughts on Alpha Theta? I think it's a good move. I think... I think... I think it's a pioneer DJ. They've been trying to break apart that brand for a long time. Like we've, if you pay attention to pioneer and their branding, they've been trying to break apart that whole DJ piece for many years now, like at least 10 years. I, th I think they probably changed their name because there's probably some licensing reason with pioneer DJ and they don't want to pay. That's my theory. But I think the reason why you see something like that is like that message is, I don't know, it's out there and you have to be out there to be creative in this music industry. So maybe there's like a connection that way. Could be. Could be. Wow. I'm just trying to think, man. All those it, 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 DJ logos in the DJ booth are going to be replaced. No, I think. So most of the time, Pioneer or whatever branded on the DJ booth or something, that's sponsored. So that you would see right. different. But like your gear, like your controller, they're not gonna they're not gonna send you a sticker to cover it up or anything like that. That's still a pioneer. <laughs> that's still pioneer gear. Like my my but but my what S7 if they is do? Is always gonna be. I ain't putting no sticker on my mixer. Tim, you are off the hook tonight because we just dipped under forty nine participants. That means the show is over tonight. Uh, but that means we can good. get you on for a future episode. And can you give us a tease on what's going on in the developer hive? Oh jeez. Thirty seconds. What's happening? What's happening? We. I don't know. I'm so excited about this. It's next level. The flexibility we have with files and the control you're going to have with the content on your machine and then getting new content onto your machine all in one place. Oh my God, it's crazy. New crates, um, faster, faster processing. Just, yeah. yeah. Woo! It's unreal. It's unreal. It, I, it's taking longer than I wanted, but yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Perfection takes time. Look at Dr. Dre. He's still working on the Chronic album. What, 30 years later? Still hasn't come out yet. Perfection <laughs> takes time. Put a four in the chat for 4.0, y'all. This is uh, Tim, Austin, Ed, Jim, Pete Sheriff, Radio, all the hackers. I see you all. I see you all. I love you all. Thank you, man. This Can we keep doing this? Keep dropping them fours. Drop a four in the chat. Want to keep doing this every uh, Tuesday night with us? Are you our ride or die? You going to hack with us every Tuesday? Bring another hacker in. I'm telling you, it gets better when you bring a friend in. Let your friends know that this is the safe space. We can just talk music. We can chop it up. I thought tonight was fun. Don't you all agree? We we didn't have to have a crate built tonight. There's plenty to dive into, but hopefully we gave you just enough information or maybe some new gems, pardon the pun, Mike, to get you all you need to <laughs> get to that next level of hacking. I had a blast. Thank you all for watching on YouTube as well. Subscribe YouTube Tuesdays in the private group on Facebook. Thank you all. Happy hacking.